Do you want to learn more about foods grown with genetically modified organisms? We talked to consumers to find out what topics they most wanted to know about in order to cut through the confusion. Then we gave them the chance to meet with an expert to ask the tough questions. Here's what one consumer wanted to know about the nutrition of GMOs compared to non-GMO foods. We're wanting to know where this is coming from and what really is in this. I think most of the things we hear from GMOs are from social media and from the mom community. And as mom, it's my job to go out there and see what what people are saying. What are the good things about GMOs? What are the bad things? I think the things that matter to me most about my family's nutrition are making sure that they have the nutrients that they need to be healthy now. But I'm also looking down the road. I don't want to give them things now that could possibly contribute to any kind of health problems. I want to know the information. I'm not going to blindly trust what's on the shelf, but I'm not going to allow people to scare me. I want to know what's true. As a dietitian, mom, and now grandma, um, I do understand the confusion that people have. Consumers are getting their information about their health, sometimes from sources that do not have any science, food, or nutrition background. If I was holding two kernels of corn or two ears of corn, one was genetically modified and one's not, what is the difference between the two? Well, number one, you would see absolutely no difference because once we get to the food part, they really are the same. Nutritionally, if you w we were to take them in and analyze them, you're gonna see the same. So if the science is out there that there's really no nutritional difference and mm -hmm. that it's not harmful in any way, where are these messages coming from? We live in a wonderful country, don't we? <laughs> it's called free speech. Yes. And you know, nowadays with social media and technology and, and the internet is wonderful, but oh my gosh, you know? So much out there. Exactly. When science speaks, Sometimes we lead to snoozes mm -hmm. rather than news. And you know, we certainly need to do a better job really communicating the positives. Here's what the evidence shows is that it is safe. Mm -hmm. you know, there is no connection to food allergy increases. There's no research to indicate there's any connection to mutations. The research is huge. I would be more likely to fully embrace research that had been done by independent people. What if though their research then gets duplicated by others? Does that increase the confidence level in terms of, wow, the science really indicates X, Y, and Z? Sure, I think the more times you can show something to be true, I think that increases the likelihood that I'm going to believe it. I really appreciated the things that Connie had to say about uh, healthy options and GM and all the different things. I consider her to be as close to the source as you can get. I appreciate her bringing up the, the body of data that's out there that supports that you know there is no increase in the allergens and uh, this, the food is safe. My name is Farah Brown. I'm a part-time nurse and a full-time mom. I have a first grader who is just like me. Um, he is very quiet, likes to sit and read. I have a four-year-old who could not be more opposite of that. He's like our little tornado. But it makes for such a fun family life. We like to play outside. We like to take the dog to the park and harness the little one's energy a little bit. <laughs> I'm Connie Dickman. I'm a registered dietitian. I've been in practice for well, 30 plus years and during that period of time one of the things I probably enjoy the most is listening to clients, my friends, listening to their concerns and then helping them get over some of the worry they have so they can move to that enjoyment piece.